In a village just outside the town of Mbale in eastern Uganda, Margaret Wangolo sits at her sewing machine. Widowed in 1999, Margaret lives here with her children. Occasionally, she gets up to attend to customers who come to buy groceries from her small shop, all water from the tap she has installed in her compound. In the village of Boke, also in eastern Uganda, Josephine shares a special moment with her children. Like Margaret, Josephine is a widow. And also like Margaret, Josephine is HIV positive. Both Josephine and Margaret are supported by the AIDS support organization, TASO. The AIDS epidemic is the greatest health crisis to have hit Sub-Saharan Africa. Although Uganda has made great strides in reducing HIV prevalence, the country still has over one million people living with HIV and over two million children have been orphaned by AIDS since the start of the epidemic. Take me for instance. I left school at a very young age to get married. Now, I am HIV positive. I have been through a lot. But I want you girls to be different. Finish school first. In the village of Maguria, also in eastern Uganda, it is almost noon. Grace hurries to prepare food for the family's meal. Vincent, her three-year-old son, offers to help. Her husband, Joseph, is still at home. He has not yet gone to his roadside butchery because they've been expecting Eunice, their TASO counselor, to visit them. Grace and Joseph are both HIV positive, but Vincent is free of the virus. This visit is only one of many which TASO staff will make today to their clients in towns and villages throughout Uganda. TASO was founded in 1987 by Noreen Kaleva and 15 other volunteers who were either living with or affected by AIDS. They aimed to restore hope and improve the quality of life of people living with HIV and AIDS and to enable them to live positively. Uh, positive living is as relevant today as it was in the beginning. And I, I recall the reason why we coined living positively was uh, to try and counter the notion that a person who has been diagnosed with HIV or uh, with AIDS is dying. There was a very predominant negative feeling about a person with HIV. Families were despairing early. The, the persons themselves we are despairing about themselves. So, so living as opposed to dying, positively as opposed to negatively. TASO was the first community-based response to HIV and AIDS in East Africa, at a time when AIDS was still associated with high levels of stigma, discrimination, denial and ignorance. <laughs> In 1990, the stigma was very high. Today, HIV is known all over and is not something to hide. I am happy to say that HIV is an issue many can talk about now, compared to the early 90s. The only thing left to do is to teach those that are not infected about ways of prevention and those that are infected about how they can still live positively. A core group of committed volunteers started the first TASO center in Ulaga Hospital in Kampala to provide counseling, social support, and medical services to people living with HIV and AIDS. TASO went all out to build strategic alliances with the Ministry of Health and other critical partners who over the years have provided the organization with invaluable support. I think the government of Uganda 
1986-87, took an unusual stance towards HIV and AIDS. It took the stance that one had to be open about HIV and AIDS. You shouldn't hide it. It took the unusual stance to publicly and at every forum talk about HIV and AIDS to help destigmatize it. But it took the unusual stance of creating an open environment to allow whoever wanted to contribute to come in and do so under some form of coordination. And it was that environment which Tasso has benefited from because that meant that as an NGO, we could come out to serve people living with HIV and AIDS. We could do so in partnership with the government of Uganda. Most of the Tasso centers are in our health facilities. But the special interest in Tasso also is that the government included Tasso in its annual budget. And that's how our partnership is very, very strong with the Tasso. They have a very clear purpose of why they are here and why they are in this business of HIV AIDS service delivery. And for any donor and organization with a very clear purpose, with a mandate to do what they do, with the clientele who need the services that they offer, those are a good combination of features that TASO has. And I remember in 1988, uh, one of the founder members, it was called uh, David Lule, when we were seated, about five people there discussing what we could do, he mentioned something which I thought was very, very important. He told us that uh, we need to work very hard for this organization to grow because it is going to help many people. That's what he said. And it has turned out to be true. Under the leadership of Noreen Kaleva as executive director, Tasso became established as a household name in Uganda. It soon achieved international recognition as an organization that cared for people living with HIV and AIDS and that also provided community and family-based services. Later, under the leadership of Sofia Mukasa Moniko, Tasso became increasingly professional in its approach. It strengthened its financial and management systems and persuaded international donor organizations to pool their support through a basket funding mechanism. When Dr. Alex Cotino became director of TASO in 2001, the organization entered a new phase of rapid growth. My own management and leadership inclination is to grow things. I enjoy growing people. I enjoy growing organizations. And so all of this came together and we were able to grow TASO grow it in terms of the services that it offers, in terms of, for instance, uh, home-based testing, in terms of home-based antiretroviral delivery programs, in terms of growing the training function from one training unit to five training units, in terms of growing from seven service centers to 11 service centers. So all of this has been phenomenal growth. Now with centers in 11 districts, mini tassels in 15 districts, and staff of over 1,000 people, TASO provides services directly or indirectly to clients and their families in 56 of Uganda's 80 districts. Since 1987, TASO has provided psychological, social, medical, and practical support to over 180,000 clients and their families. At the center of TASO's services, is the process of counseling. Tasso has helped me very much. It saved my life and is still continuing to give me counseling. This counseling has made me strong and encouraged me to live a happy life. All I'm asking is that Tasso gives me some training, maybe in counseling and other areas, so I can also help other people in the camp. They have been seeing me sick here for a long time in the camp, and I am now okay with assistance from TASO. I can share my experience with them and encourage them to go for testing. There are some people here in the camp that died without testing and getting any assistance at all. I would encourage them to test their blood. TASO has touched the lives of tens of thousands of Ugandan families in many different ways. Margaret Wangolo, with the help of three loans from TASO, has built up her small business and paid for her children's education. 
Atano, magesi kwa siku nyo haifu na mutasu vye ba kusome sa kwa afu na magesi kesi kwa nyo kwa kwa. Most of the knowledge and skills which I learned from Taso have helped me to engage in several income generating activities instead of relying on just one. I have a small shop, a public payphone and a sewing machine and I rear chickens. So from all these activities, I can't fail to make ends meet. At the heart of Taso's approach and perhaps the secret of its success has been what is widely known as the Taso family spirit. Again, the genesis of the family spirit was uh, best in, uh, I can say, in my personal experience after my husband was diagnosed with AIDS. Uh, the most important um, gift that Christopher always talked about is the gift of family. Christopher was living in England when he was diagnosed. Despite that care, you know, despite that attention, all the wonderful medical care that he had, time came when he asked to be discharged, to come back home. And when we asked why, and everybody said, wow, why does he want to come home? He said he missed his family. Because it wasn't possible for us, uh, me and my four children, to be with him there as he struggled for his life. He, the missing element in his life was his family. And when he came back, just before he died, and even if, if, if he was in pain, and uh, it soon became apparent that he wouldn't live long, he was a happy man, much happier than he had been at Castle Hill Hospital. So from that early beginnings, I was personally convinced that one of the key elements of survival for a person with HIV is the family being together, family spirit. And when, whenever we would approach a person with HIV, one of the first questions we would ask them was, who is there in your family that can be informed about uh, your illness. The bringing family into the picture and, and survival of the family became a very, very important element of our response. That's all. Particularly our centre has really a big workload. And unless you work as a team, unless you work as a family, there's no way you can really shoulder it alone. It becomes heavy and it is so stressing. So once you work as a family, then things get moving. You, you, you feel secure, you know? What you can't handle, another colleague can, can handle. Eh? Where the, the, the load seems to be big, all of you are there to, to share bits, and by the end of the day, the, it becomes light and manageable. Tasso is a family. That's why we don't call our patients uh, the things, the infected, the victims, okay? Uh, we are not supposed to segregate, to promote stigma. We are supposed to promote that spirit of set of value. When you are staff of Tasso, you are not supposed to be so high that for, for the clients are so low. When you are in Tasso, you are the same. You are all human beings. Maybe one has a problem, but which you are supposed to understand and address. Yeah, I remember when early a manifestation of this family spirit was eating together. In the very, very early beginnings of Tasso, we didn't have funding for, to buy food. So we asked that when clients would be coming to clinics, they would bring whatever they had the night before. They would bring it to the, to the clinic, to bring it to the space where they were coming, and we would all share that, that food. And I, I am proud today that in every center, I think there is some elements of eating together on a daily basis when clients uh, for their care. At each Tasso center, clients attend clinic days where they are provided with practical, emotional and social support, as well as medical care. At the Katavira center on the outskirts of Kampala, community members come every Wednesday for counseling, medical treatment, nutritional support and HIV testing. Lab technicians take blood and give the results of the tests by the end of the day. 16-year-old Winfred is here today with her father for a checkup and to collect more medicines and food. When I'm given the medicine, my father helps me to administer the right dosage for all the tablets given. When I don't feel like taking the medicine, I force myself to do so. But deep down, I really don't want to because I am fed up with it. I have to take it though, 
because I know it prolongs my life. I know that if I take this medicine, I will get strong again and be able to get back to school and study all the way to university. Compared to what my daughter looked like when she first came to Kanyanya, I really cannot express my joy at what Taso has done for her. She never used to talk and could not even walk. To see her talk and try to express her feelings today is great. She had so much anger. Her counselor, Annette, has done a lot to help Winifred open up. She would listen to us and not talk. When we told her she had HIV, I saw my daughter drift away from her soul. Because she has undergone so much counseling, she's finally coming back to us and slowly gaining her strength. Tasso provides its clients with material support in form of protein-rich food supplements. Clients' children are also given support to enable them to complete their schooling and to undertake vocational training. There are so many orphans and vulnerable children of our clients whom we have registered. As you know, in Uganda, each family has many children. The list is long, but we have tried our best. We keep in touch with them, helping them to understand how should they give care to these children. That's very important. They should remain within the community, within the families. And we have emphasized what they require. The rights of the children should be observed. Education being one of them. And what Tasso has done is to contribute to that, especially the education, to make sure they get the, uh, the basic education so that later on, they are able to live on their own, and also educating them in uh, looking after their health so that they grow up healthy people and they avoid any uh, diseases like HIV, which again are going to bring problems to them. I have four children, all grown up now, but in 1989, they were just little children. The firstborn, Bruce, was supported by Tasso throughout his education until he got his degree from Makere University. Now he is an accountant with a Uganda Red Cross. Training has always been an important part of Tasso's activities. Initially, the aim was to train staff to manage Tasso's own expanding network of service centers. Later, Tasso began training the staff of other organizations. In capacity building, we train individuals, we train organizations, institutions, government institutions, NGOs, CBOs, and we build their capacity in care and support. Our courses are built on Tasso's experience of 19 years. That's where we draw from. So even as we develop our curricula, we base on that experience, what has worked for Tasso. So where will they gain that experience, but they also have a benefit to work, I mean, to see what TASO does at their centers, because our training has some hands-on experience. Um, people get an opportunity to go to the centers, and they're able to see what TASO does and get involved in the actual counseling, if it's counseling, if it's community care of HIV and AIDS, if that's the course that is being offered, they have an opportunity to go out into the community and see how the communities evolved and how they work. Tasso's trainers have developed curricula and provide training in counseling, training of trainers, peer counseling support, grassroots community work, and counselor supervision. When we go into training organizations, we assess their needs first, and then we can tailor. For example, we can say that the HIV counselors course, these people need the HIV counselors course, but they also need some bit of community care, uh, nutrition and HIV or gender and HIV because we run all those courses. So we can tailor according to the needs of a community, of an organization, of a CBO. The Tasso Training Center in Kampala is supported by training courses in Tasso's 11 service centers. The high demand for Tasso's training courses and services places a heavy responsibility on Tasso staff to maintain high standards. It's a very challenging uh, way of doing business. When your programs expand, naturally you expect that quality suffers. 
But as well as an organization has tried to maintain a good balance of good quality programs while expanding at a very rapid scale sometimes. And they've been able to do this as a result of having really the right people, the right staff in the right places at the right time, and continuously training their staff to continuously be on top of things. They've been able to do all these things because they have had the goodwill of everyone involved in their partnership, in their activities. And uh, TASO has a way of not sacrificing uh, quality uh, for expansion, but it is a challenge that they continuously work at and they continue to seek guidance and support from all the partners involved in their work. Over the years, as a result of the increased demand for counseling services, more and more players have come onto the scene in Uganda. It was realized that counseling needed to be standardized and quality improved. Under the leadership of the Ministry of Health, TASO and other stakeholders have started the SCORT project to improve the quality of HIV counseling in Uganda. SCORT stands for Strengthening HIV Counselor Training. It's a project that was started in 2004 for the purpose of improving the quality of HIV counseling in the country. So SCORT looks at five major areas in its effort to improve the quality of counseling and to ensure that there's a standardization of counselor training in the nation. The first area is curriculum development. When we develop curricula, it is important that institutions be empowered to utilize these curricula. And so we train the trainers of various institutions that are involved in using this curricula. We orient them to, to use the curricula so that they can go on and train counselors for the aid service organizations. We are also involved in accreditation, facilitating the establishment of an accreditation system for counselor training in the nation. We are involved in uh, advocacy and also coordination for the counseling profession. Lastly, we're also involved in monitoring and evaluation of counselor training. From the start, TASO recognized that people living with HIV and AIDS, PHAs, are vitally important in building effective community responses to the challenges of HIV. This meant that they also needed to play an important part in the management of TASO itself. As a PHA working in TASO, I've learned a number of things. TASO has made me grow in my work as a PHA. TASO is an organization which has welcomed people living with HIV AIDS. It has involved them right from the governance stage, right through the work. And I feel as a PHA that I'm working within a family that I feel I belong to. People living with HIV and AIDS are probably the most important partners that we have because without them, we would not be able to give the legitimacy, the credibility, and also the effectiveness of what we do. Let us remember that in the early days of the epidemic, it was much easier to look around and see people who are HIV positive. There were a lot of people who are thin with the classic slim. Today, because of antiretrovirals, the face of HIV, particularly in a city like Kampala, is not that evident. And if we forget the face of HIV, we may forget what needs to be done. So our clients as partners who give a face to HIV, who give a voice to HIV, that partnership is the most important. TASO advocates for people living with HIV and AIDS at national and international level, giving a voice to their interests and concerns. A number of us are involved in policy making in this country. Before I joined TASO, I was already in the antiretroviral th therapy uh, policy making group. We looked at how, how, how do we give out drugs, uh, antiretroviral drugs in this country? Who do we give them to? What are the things we should look at? The other policies which have been created in this country, we have the national HIV policy itself, of which I was a member of even before I joined TASO in 2004. The TASO Board of Trustees, elected from among the organization's subscribing members during the annual general meeting, provides overall governance and direction to the organization. Each TASO service center also has its own advisory committee, which provides oversight and guidance on policy and management issues. 
TASO being a, a local a local initiated organization it draws its support and its program directly from the interests of the client and as a result the membership of the board comprises of both the clients and the members of the community and as a result you will find that the interest of the community is what is actually pushed forward in the board and the board ensures that the programming and then the implementation is in line and is in the interest of the beneficiary. Gertrude Nabude, who is herself HIV positive, represents TASO clients at national level on the board of trustees. We visit the clients in the community and solicit for their views or gather them during clinic days, then forward them to the management. In turn, management gives us the feedback, which we pass on to the members at the grassroots through community outreaches and clinic days. Antiretroviral therapy, ART, can transform the lives of people living with HIV. In 2004, TASO began providing ART to many of its clients. By the end of 2007, TASO was providing ART to 18,000 people. Christopher Omoit Machika lives with his wife and family near Tororo in eastern Uganda. By then my CD4 count was merely 16. You can imagine I was turning towards uh, the grave. When I started taking the ARVs, my CD4 count started growing slowly from 16 to, went to 50. So currently I left when it was uh, at 270. Since I've, I've been taking it, there are quite a number of things that have changed. One, I'm not falling frequently sick. I'm now capable of sustaining my family. In fact, I'm doing agriculture. There are quite a number of crops that I've grown. I have some granites, have millet, uh, maize, and even uh, rice. So you can see it has been actually an achievement. In rural areas, most TASO clients live far from the local TASO center, which they are rarely able to visit. However, TASO field workers regularly deliver ART medicines to the communities where their clients live. This service is particularly vital in Gulu district in the north of Uganda, where most of the population has been living for many years in camps for the internally displaced people. In this camp for displaced people in Gulu district, a client's supply of medicines is checked and how weight is taken and recorded. With advice on taking the right dosage, the new medicines are handed over along with a fresh new supply of condoms before field workers move on to the next client. Antiretroviral therapy is part of a package of care which TASO, in collaboration with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, provides to its clients. The basic care kit consists of seven components. Antiretroviral drugs for those who require them. Septrin, water purification solution. A water container. Mosquito nets. Condoms and health education materials. These components were decided upon after a scientific study conducted by the Centers for Disease Control. It does build on two previous studies, one of which was septrin prophylaxis. Septrin has been shown to reduce uh, occurrence of opportunistic infections in, among people with HIV. So the study done here showed that septrin was very useful. The second study was the safe water vessel study. The simple plastic jerry can used well with chlora can reduce diarrhea among people with HIV and even those without HIV in homes. So that was included as a basic care package and HBAC adds ARVs to that. Christopher Omoit Machika has benefited from the HBAC program. When we were introduced on the Safe Water project, little did I know that actually I had some problems. Uh, during that time, that's when I developed some sort of uh, diarrhea. And um, when it was diagnosed, they found out it was uh, dysentery. So it was treated. 
after the treatment, well, I recovered. Because during that, that uh, period, I was weak. And uh, of course, I was not uh, capable of doing uh, quite a number of things. Well, the condoms have really benefited me because, uh, for one thing, my wife is negative, and of course I'm positive. So we are living this Kondase uh, life. So how could I check that she does not get uh, infected? That's by use of condom. Every Tasso center has a daycare center where people living with HIV can meet for fellowship, mutual support, health education, and income generating activities. The daycare centers are also the meeting places for Tasso drama groups, which take HIV messages into local communities through song, dance, music, and highly entertaining drama performances. We meet every Monday and Wednesday and share ideas and experiences. And out of this, we write songs and short plays that are HIV and AIDS related. We give testimony about what is happening in our lives and we go out to the communities, to schools, to hospitals, and we sensitize the people out there about the virus. And our testimonies are a big help in trying to reach them. The Tasso Drama Group performances attract huge crowds and are an effective way of bringing issues related to HIV and AIDS, gender and sexual behavior, into the public domain, where people can discuss them openly. Members of the drama groups also give personal testimonies about living with HIV. It takes courage to talk in public about being HIV positive. But Tasso has found out that going public about being HIV positive can bring great benefits. It gives a human face and voice to the HIV epidemic, helps to reduce HIV-related stigma, and opens up new channels for HIV education. While still in its formative stages, TASO received financial and capacity building support from international agencies such as ActionAid, World in Need, and DFID. Over the years, TASO has received additional support from many other international organizations. How has TASO managed to maintain the confidence of international donor agencies, and how has it managed to grow into such a large and influential organization? I remember one time uh, in the early days, uh, the challenge was how will TASO survive when you are entirely dependent on donor funding? Donors get tired and one day you will not have funding. And I said, well, you know, I am not going to worry about donor funding. All I'm going to worry about is that we put together a good quality program. And once we have a good quality program, if one donor tires, during the time that we are doing that good, good quality program, another donor will come, about, will come around and will see what we are doing and will want to be associated with what is, what is being done. And it has turned out to be, to be true. TASO has been able to maintain the support of many donors and other partners through what we have documented as the six P's. The first P stands for purpose. Our purpose is to contribute the process of restoring hope and improving the quality of life for people living with HIV and AIDS. We are also there to enhance the prevention of HIV infection to people who are not infected. So if TASO and any organization has a clear purpose for its existence, then it will get the support that it needs continue operating. We have a set of principles uh, around which we operate. We have issues of integrity, human dignity, equal rights, equal opportunities, commitment to people living with HIV and AIDS, our family spirit, 
these principles help us to make sure that we are fully accountable to all our stakeholders for the resources that they entrust us with. The other P is product. And really, towards what is product, the product is what are we delivering? And we're delivering positive living for people living with HIV and AIDS. And it is visible. We also have established key strategic partnerships. We cannot do everything by ourselves. We cannot reach everywhere by ourselves. So we need to work together with different partners. And these strategic partnerships have kept us going and will continue to do so. The other P is about posterity. That is also commonly referred to as sustainability. What is TASU doing to make sure that its services, the care and support is providing to people, is available 5, 10, 20 years down the road. So we are very conscious of that and we are building systems, uh, working with government and health units to build into the national health system the ability to provide the kind of services that we do. The last P is proof. Are we able to demonstrate in real terms what we are talking about? Are we able to show our results? In our case, proof is there. We have the data. We have the systems to deliver the data information. We have everything that is needed to prove to anybody that what we are saying is true, that the services we are provided are real. That pool of peace is what has kept us going and has uh, enabled us to get all the support that we've got over the years. And we believe we'll continue uh, sustaining this support through continued uh, utilization of the same strategies to ensure that our partners are happy and we're delivering the results. We have got systems which have set up on finances, how to receive them, how to handle them, how to disperse them, and how to account for them. We always stick to these principles and uh, we have always revised them to see whether there are gaps which need to be put right. Secondly, we have maintained the recruitment procedure where we recruit people who are experienced, well qualified, who will manage these funds. And they continuously challenge and encourage donors to say, look, there, there's much more work out there than what we are able to do. And donors see that there is internal examination of their processes and methods. They continuously want to improve the quality of what they are doing. They continuously examine their approaches and they check out, they consult with donors. And this is unusual, it's unique in my view. TASO still faces daunting challenges as it tries to assist communities in addressing the consequences of the AIDS epidemic. Nowhere are these challenges greater than in the north of Uganda, which has been ravaged by warfare for the past two decades. Obviously the situation in the north of Uganda continues to challenge all of us. Uh, whilst conflict can create the conditions that lead to the spread of the epidemic, peace after conflict is often much more challenging and you often find epidemic exploding in the peace that comes after serious conflict. Another major challenge which TASO is now addressing as a high priority is that of HIV prevention. In a sense, the complacency around HIV and AIDS that has been brought about partly because the natural history of any disease that stays around for 20 years is that people get used to it and they no longer regard it as a serious threat but also the availability of antiretroviral therapy might have meant that, particularly the younger generation, believe that HIV is curable. We are seeing that infection rates could be going up again. Indeed, adult HIV prevalence in Uganda has settled at around 6% since 2000, and over 130,000 new HIV infections occur every year. Recent research shows that 60 to 70 percent of new HIV infections in sub-Saharan Africa occur in stable sexual partnerships, such as HIV discordant couples, where one partner is HIV positive and the other is negative. In fact, 64 percent of TASO's clients live in discordant relationships. Jane Florence and Francis Kawesa are a discordant couple who attend the TASO Daycare Center at Mulago Hospital in Kampala. 
Since Jen Florence tested HIV positive nine years ago, they have used condoms consistently and correctly, as encouraged by TASO counselors. My advice to those that are in a situation similar to ours, where one is positive and the other negative, is that they should always use condoms in the proper way that they are taught and store them as they are taught. They should avoid as much as possible cases where the one who is HIV negative becomes infected with the HIV virus. My advice to them is to maintain constant proper use of condoms. Even though you feel you love your spouse so much, you need to accept that that is the situation and protect the other from infection. That is my advice. Tasso is now embarking on a major new initiative, the Positive Prevention Project, which aims to reduce HIV prevalence in Uganda through the active involvement of HIV-positive people in promoting safer sexual behavior, especially by discordant couples. The project starts through the training of trainers, such as Penina Namusi. I'm so glad for the opportunity to, uh, to undertake this course because it's a very important intervention. Personally, as a counselor and as a counseling coordinator, now a trainer, we've had a challenge of how to support clients in the prevention of HIV. Before you clean a room, which is wet, you rather turn off the tap, which is bringing in the water. Then you can successfully mop that room and it will dry out and everybody will see that you've done work. So in this intervention, I'm seeing it as very, very pertinent in the prevention strategy. If we able to turn off the tap, the tap meaning the flow of HIV from one person to another, then we'll have a success story. In the future, with the support of its partners and friends, TASO will strive to develop and maintain a range of effective strategies for the care and support of people living with HIV and AIDS, and also to help reduce the prevalence of HIV in Uganda. TASO will continue being the leading organization in the fight against HIV and AIDS in Uganda, providing comprehensive care and support for people living with HIV and AIDS. As TASO, we have a new strategic plan. We have put in place special packages, prevention, Prevention is a key to the fight against HIV and AIDS in Uganda. So we all have to be part of that prevention process. And in TASO, we are scaling up positive prevention. We are scaling up home-based HIV AIDS counseling and testing. We believe will contribute significantly to the prevention efforts in the country. We also will continue supporting the national response through building the capacity of institutions of government, other NGOs, as well as the communities to fight HIV and AIDS. We will continue training them and providing them with the necessary support to be able to do what they have to do. Northern Uganda has been in a conflict situation over the last 20 years or so. And over these years, HIV has also entrenched itself in northern Uganda. Now, northern Uganda has the highest prevalence rates in the country. So, for us as TASO, we consider this a major challenge. And in our strategic plan, we have put in place special packages for northern Uganda. TASO has come a long way since its humble beginnings in 1987. But will there still be a need for TASO? in 20 years' time. TASO has shown that they are able to evolve and remain relevant over the years. I believe in 20 years' time, TASO will be around perhaps a completely different type of program compared to what it is today. But yes, TASO will still be around. There's always going to be a need for TASO, and I think in 20 years' time, be it 50 years' time, TASO will always be needed. Shall we need TASO 20 years from now? I would say yes. Even if we, found, we got an, a cure for HIV, tomorrow, the people that have had HIV will still have several psychosocial issues to address. And so we shall still need the counseling services of, of, of the counselors in TASO to help them go through the issues. There is tremendous need for TASO to be still in existence. 
I wish I could say to the world that TASO will not be needed 20 years from now, but the reality is that it will be needed beyond even 20 years, even if at the beginning of TASO we had planned a very clear dissolution phrase which is in the Constitution. The reason why TASO will be needed beyond 20 years and more is because we now have to concisely work and contribute towards prevention. We know today that if we don't make a, a difference in preventing further spread of HIV and AIDS, the quality of care will be compromised. And for us, quality of care uh, is very, very important. In the beginning, our entry point into families was through the person who has been HIV infected. But these people have left children, and these are children are the future of Uganda. So we need now to focus our programs on their needs, and in particular, giving them skills that will enable them to survive the pandemic and other issues that will come in their lives in the future. United.